Hello world, I'm Nick Proud and today we're going to be talking about how to read a CSV file using C Sharp. Before we start, if you want some more C Sharp content, or .NET content for that matter, uh, then be sure to like the channel and give us uh, a subscribe, it really does help. Uh, but let's get into it. So today what we want to do is we want to take a CSV file, so this is a comma separated values file, um, as shown in this Excel, and we want to read this using C Sharp using um, what's called a stream reader. So we're going to use this stream reader to read in the contents of this file and then read it line by line so that you can split out the individual cells and do something with it. Um, so first of all, let's let's open up a console app and let's talk about how we can actually achieve this. So I've got the trusty old demo console uh, and this is a, a console application. If you're not familiar with console apps, then uh, do a little bit of Googling, have a look around on YouTube. They're very, very simple to use essentially just a, uh, a straightforward program that executes start to finish um, and we're going to use that to read our CSV file. So the first thing I've done in our entry point is I've first specified where my CSV is. So I've just created a string that says that this CSV is at this path and now I'm good to create my stream reader and use that to read this file into a stream. So first thing I'm going to do is use a using statement. Uh, so we've talked about these a little bit before, um, but I'm going to use this here and call it reader. So creating a variable called reader. And you can see Visual Studio in the IntelliSense has created a suggestion to create a new stream reader, probably because it's seen the term CSV in that previous variable. If that's true, then that's, that's really clever. But essentially, this is what we're doing. We're creating a new instance of stream reader, and the parameter that it, that it accepts is a path, which is going to be this CSV path. The using statement uh, allows us to take advantage of iDisposable, which means that when we create the stream reader, uh, it will be automatically disposed of when the execution leaves this curly bracket here. Um, so it means we don't have to manually say streamreader.close or anything like that. We can just confidently create an instance of it. It will be used for just this scope and then disposed of. So we're, we're, we're nice and compliant in that sense. That good practice to use using wherever possible. So then how do we use this to actually read the stream? So what will happen is the reader will um, go to the CSV file, it will stream it into uh, this reader, and this reader allows us to say, do I have a line of uh, data, or am I at the end of the stream, sorry, so I can say, um, you know, while I'm not at the end of the stream, give me a line of data. Uh, and the reason we can do this is because CSV file, because of the way that CSV files are formatted, they explicitly uh, state in the text when a line has finished and when a new line is beginning. And that's brilliant because we can use that delimiter character to say, I'm on a new line, therefore I've got a new row of data that I'm going to pass out. So let's start our statement with a while. So I'm going to say while uh, reader dot end of stream, and that, that needs to be false. So we're saying while we're not at the end of the stream, then we're going to get the data, we're going to get a line from the stream and then move on. Um, to the next line. So I'm going to say var content equals reader dot read line. So this will read uh, an available line if there is one and it will put the content into this variable. And so this will allow us to pull through a specific line or the next line in the CSV and then we can do something with that. Um, and because this is, a, this is a CSV file, the uh, individual cells that we see in the Excel will be uh, separated by commas. So you can see here we've got all these uh, different cells. We've got the in, in a row, for example, we've got the subject, which is math. We've got the assignment, which for this row is lorem ipsum. Uh, and then we've got the status, which for this is done. So in the line that we bring in with the stream reader, um, we should have a single line uh, of a string with words separated by commas, meaning that we can then split out those cells on the comma and you've got the individual cells and then you can go off and do whatever you need to do with that data. So let's just test this out then. Let's have a look and see uh, what we've got. So I'm going to put a breakpoint on this while. I'm going to kick this console application off. 
So we're inside, oh, straight away, failed. <laughs> so one uh, pro tip is if you are trying to read a file, then you should close it. So I've just closed that file because it's been currently used by a different process. This process, which is the console app, isn't able to read the stream because it's been locked. Uh, so now I've closed that file, we should be able to read it. So I've created a new reader uh, at that CSV path. And if we just hover over that, you can see uh, that we've got a stream inside there and that we're not currently at the end of the stream uh, because the reader is still at the very beginning of that stream. So let's step over this bit then. So obviously we're not at the end of the stream and we're going to set content to reader.readline. And we'll have a look over content and you can see there's not really much we can use here. So this is clearly uh, an empty row. Um, so we can just ignore it. If you had some logic which was parsing this, um, then you would obviously skip this row. So let's keep going through until we start to find something useful. So you can see here in my content watch, uh, there's still nothing in that variable. And here we go. So we've actually got something in here now. So we've got the text assignment tracker with all this text here. So this is going to be the first row with text. And again, if you were passing this CSV, you would probably ignore this data. Keep going through. And what we've got here is what looks like another empty line. We've gone past the headers. And there we go. I recognize this line. So here we've got the first line of data. So we've got that um, math, the law of Ipsum, and you can see they're all separated by these commas. So now we can actually get this data, uh, get these individual cells out and do something with them. Um, so for example, what we could do if we stop that, we could say um, var cells equals content dot split and we want to split it on a comma character. And I'm going to put that into a list because I, I love lists. So there we go. There's a list of string, which will be the cells that have been pulled out of each individual row. And I'm going to say if cells.count is greater than zero, so that means if we've got data, because if it's a blank row, it will just be a bunch of commas. Uh, and if you were going to split a row on commas, then I guess you would get nothing in the list. It should be zero, but we're obviously going to we're going to um, test that greater than zero. Okay. So let's run that again. So here we've got the line read from the top of the CSV. We're going to split it. And as you can see, actually, it has populated with blank strings. Um, so this is actually not the best check for data. Um, so another thing you could do is we could get a little bit fancy and we could create a bespoke function for checking that the data that has been pulled from the, ro uh, the row is not blank. So we could say, let's create a new static uh, bool. So we're going to return a true or false. Um, and we're going to say row has data and you could pass in um, string row content. So what you could do um, is you could say, I'm going to do that. In fact, actually, let's pass in a, a list of string because we've already at this point, we want to have already pulled split the cells on the comma. Um, so I'll change that to a list of string and it's uh, cells. So you pass the cells in and it will say whether it's got data or not. So we can use link for this, I think. So we could say um, return cells dot any and then we can use a lambda function to say any of those cells um, where x dot length is greater than zero. You could also do x um, is not equal um, an empty string if you wanted to. Um, but this is pretty much the same thing. So we're using link here saying uh, return the result of this condition if any of those conditions are true. So passing in 
x which is the current cell that we're looking at when we're iterating through um, and where the length is greater than zero because if it is it's got content and therefore this row has data so we could scrap this bit and say instead if row has data cells then we can do something with that content we only really want to do something with it if it's got data if it's a blank cell it doesn't really matter a blank row sorry there we go so it's got seven entries but it's empty which is kind of useless to us so we run row has data and we can see here there is nothing there okay and this one has 12 entries but it has data so there you go so this one even though it's not really the data we want, it has data. So we want to take a look at it. So here you can see our function says this has data in it because it's ran this any where the um, where one of the items in the list is length is greater than zero. Therefore, it has data. So then now we can check to see is this a header or is it one of the rows that we're expecting? And that then comes down to your own individual rules. Um, it may be that you know what the headers are for the CSV files and you can say if it starts with assignment tracker then we skip it because it's the header uh, and you keep doing this until you actually get to a row that you know is actually a legitimate row and then you can start splitting that row up uh, on again on commas so that you can get the individual cell values. So I hope this was useful. It was a very basic example. Uh, and for the most part, this was just about getting the CSV file into a stream so that you can then start parsing out the rows. Um, and then obviously going further than that, trying to figure out how to um, read the data in a logical way, how to identify whether the data is part of a table that you actually want. That's a bit more down to your individual business rules or your logic. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope this was useful. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really does help the channel. And check out the channel soon for some more C-Sharp and .NET tips. Thanks.